All right, I'm just trying to sort out uh, one of the Rohan spears here. Um, I thought it was a simple fix, but of course it always turns out more complicated. Uh, we've got um, Eomer's spear, and someone had done a previous sculpt, which is um, just not... It's not designed for print properly. It's an old, it's an old sculpt, and uh, it's too shallow. There's not, there's not enough definition to make it worth printing, and it also has an extremely thick edge. Uh, I don't know what they were thinking, but it's you know it's roughly correct. Uh, it's just not texture. It's not good enough. Details not good enough. So um, I was remaking it and I've generated a, a nice uh, extruded, uh, a nice extrusion of the uh, detail. So I've got that all nice and crisp. You see the difference. Well, I mean, there's a few problems with the. Uh, with the extrusion, but it's so small it doesn't matter. So then I notice that in the reference material, um, there's a much more complex blades. Uh, the blade shape, obviously, it uh, you know it, it rises up to the center. It has a kind of um, a cutaway down the center. So yeah, I'm going to have to replicate that, which is going to be very complicated, but at least I've got my my details correct. Quite happy with the position. Look at this. Um, because I've used the original image uh, to generate this form, you know, it's it's practically perfect when it's overlaid. You can move it around a bit at the top. But yeah, look at even that curve at the bottom is, is really good. And plus I'm going to get this extra little detail at the bottom. Oh no, I'm not, because it's cut away. Yeah, I'm going to have to cut away. This, this model I've been given is um, is closed. So I think the first thing I want to do is is cut that away and open that up. So the best way to do that would be to dynamesh this object which uh, was created by someone else. It's a rather crude. I mean, sculptors do seem to deliver I guess most people don't want large files. Uh, and you know, you see the decimation here is fine, but it's it's very low, low level. We've only got 124,000 points here. So first thing to do is take all this up dramatically in Dynamesh. Okay. Well, 1.2 million can get get us started with the with the cut. So um, I'm just gonna use the masking look I used I used the border there to check the horizontal on that and I'm just going to mask this area. And now I've got um, symmetry in the z-axis for this job, so I whatever angle, I mean whatever I do on one side is going to be replicated. I just want to get in nice and tight to that surface so it doesn't take too much cleanup. And then I'm going to uh, get rid of 
the, the stuff I want to keep. Uh, yeah. Just want to get in here. So I want to keep that. Oh, um, what's the problem? Oh yes, I've got Z symmetry, but I really need something else as well. Unfortunately, the model arrived in a um, yeah Z and Y is going to do it. The model arrived in this position. You can see from the head here, it's it's not really ideal. But that's okay. course translating between programs that will occur anyway. They don't all use the same system. All right. Um, well, it would be good to get a nice clean edge on that. So I think I'm going to use a box. Let's try and get a vertical. And uh, use a box. All right. That's a bit more like it. OK, what I can do is, um, I don't know, maybe we'll see. We'll see if it works. I sometimes, instead of using booleans, I, um, I, I split the masked parts, you know, so they're gone. But we'll see what happens. If this distance is great enough, the boolean, the um, dynamesh should work. Yeah, that's good. You can't really get away with that behavior in tighter areas, obviously, because the, the Dynamesh will want to seal itself up. And um, you, won't, you won't have a gap anymore. Right, so I want to have a light um, rub down here. I'm not too worried about geometric perfection for this. Yeah, I mean, it's a handmade object a spearhead made by expert craftsmen for sure but still a handmade object so it needn't be too perfect okay that's looking good now there is the issue of the um, the extra gap here I think I probably will have a boolean for that so it's nice and clean so I'm going to need this cylinder and uh, let's get the cylinder in here and see I want to mimic the overall 
oval shape. And then yes, yeah, it's, it's slightly odd. Everything's slightly odd. It's not you know, it's never going to be perfectly kind of curved, some spherical, or, you know, these things are um, so I want to divide that a little bit. Check that it's coming out both sides. All right. Um, uh, I need it to be right up to the corner here. But I don't need you know the rest of it. I only need it to be available in the area which is retained. But anyway, I need a larger number of polygons. Let's make this nice and uh, nice and smooth. Okay, like a million, and then, um, yeah, I need to just cut this right at the top, and that will be, uh, that will give us the, the nice higher uh, shape. Uh, I'm going to just check that this is not interfering with the, uh, the shaft. I'll take that back a bit. Delete the hidden dynamish. All right, well, we can see here it's going to leave me a bit of, 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 of the shaft, but I can clean that up afterwards. So let, let's just cut that. at the inside on the reference. It feels like, you know, it's not exactly right, but close enough. And um, this curve at the top is, it's a bit flatter. That's probably quite good. Let's try that. I want to do it on both sides as well, so I need to duplicate and um, uh, 
the mirror. And then said, okay, well, I've had a bit of trouble with Dynamation more than one object, so I'm just going to do them separately. Let's do that one. Merge. Pretty good. It looks very thick. The whole thing's extremely thick. But uh, we should be all right. We're going to do this cutout anyway into the surface. Um, so we've got the volume to deal with that. Sub, merge down, breathe down a mesh. Okay, um, well it looks a little weird because we've got this kind of chamfer thing at the bottom. But actually it's a pretty good shape. I like the shape. The, the, the chamfer is a distraction. You know, if I continued it. It would not be so bad. Anyway, I think we need some more polygons, please. There's three million. In reality, in the model, it's quite a, it's quite a large, um, Bevel. Bevel, you might call it, yes. Just check everything's okay on the back. Always check, always check, because you don't know. You could be doing something terribly wrong. Right, now, I think my biggest concern is the... Um, this Boolean. How on earth am I going to get that shape? What I want is a, well, it looks like a, a cylinder. Can't be that bad. Some kind of cylinder. Can we get rid of these other blades? I don't need, don't need those blades. And I certainly don't need those. Right, yeah, we want to run a cylinder along. You might see this was a recurring feature of the Lord of the Rings A lot of it seems to have cylindrical cutaways So let's get some uh, 
or polygons on that. And let me think how big this, how big does this, um, this thing want to be? Now it's tricky, it has to continue all the way to the tip. This is where it gets tricky, and this is where live booleans would really come into their own. So luckily we have live booleans. If I make my cylinder a sub and I put on live booleans, I don't need to press start here, but if I had more than one Oh yes. Oh, look at that. Oh, beautiful. Nice blade work. So I don't think it, I don't want a full, um, my cutout mustn't be a full circular form because that would be too, it would just take too much depth away I think I want something a lot shallower than that. And therefore, you know, my cylinder is going to become quite squished like this. But yeah, it's just a question of playing with that. Um, I want it to go all the way to the top. Um, so let me have a look at the angles from this side. If I have, um, yeah, see the blade is pretty flat. It's actually... Although, you know, it, it tapers thinner at the end, obviously. The angle is very shallow. It's not flat. I mean, the blade is flat. The angle of the blade here to, towards the center is not flat because it's, you know, it, is thicker at the bottom. But it's almost flat. So the thing is, oh, the old pivot problem, it's it's really tricky. With the the pivots are very jumpy. I do feel like if you draw your draw your um control away to the edge of the screen you might get more slightly more to play with now we're talking look it's we're going all the way up the top here um but Oh yeah, there's an angle, there's an angle we might consider, you know, no, it's, it's really not. Okay, um, I need this to come with the blade, uh, with the edge, I want it to... run parallel down the side. Does this mean... Do I have to... Yeah, see, that's more like it. But it's very wide at the top. 
I think, yeah, the only way to do this is to actually, uh, I need to make the, the cylinder taper off. Um, uh, tapering is tapering can be quite tricky. Um, in ZBrush, I don't find it very straightforward. And I'm off. I'm off the perpendicular now. Ooh, that's quite nice. Yeah. If I taper in the X, this is the kind of deal. All right, well, I can try that with the Boolean on. Let me see. Can I have uh, live tapering? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the angle is not good. I need to keep an eye on this angle and then taper. Um, Feels like there's a little bend in this taper though. I like it gets a bit bendy. But we're definitely making progress. I need to have a an edge, you know, sort of um Yeah, on in the middle it must come gradually to the middle and then you see the detail lies in this recessed this this boolean cutout is where you find the detail it needs to go rather narrow at the top but I'm getting this I'm getting this edge oh it's very it's very deep oh no Oh, it's deep and it is curved. Why on earth is it curved? And why is it so deep? It's much shallower like this. Now I'd love to know why this thing's curved. Is it, oh, is it because my, um, center was quite, low down. My pivot was too low down. It's just very bent. Why would the... It's to, it's to do with the bounds, the, 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 uh, the limitations of the, the taper which we're not able to control. The bounds Well, I mean, that looks straight enough, but is it thin enough? Is it tapered enough? Really, this control is not it's not acceptable. How on earth do I get finer control with my pivot? Press hard and have a very firm hand. No shaky. Alright, well look this is looking pretty good. 
Um, I would like it to be up to the top. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, yeah, because even in the middle here, this has to be at the top in the middle, it has to meet uh, just halfway. So that's quite impressive. Um, right, okay. Right. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, well, let me just um, think about this area here. That's really good. Um, I do need this. Um, I do need this edge. I should probably explore bevels in. There's a new bevel feature in ZBrush, which um, is probably pretty good for this kind of thing. Right, it's not taking me all the way to the bottom. But I think I'm not going to worry too much about that because I, I think I'm going to I'm going to deal with that by hand. Um, I'm very happy with this edge. I want to keep that position. It does feel like it should come in a little bit more. Here, but um, but it was perfect at the top. So, hmm. I think um, it's going to be tricky to turn this. No, I can't turn it because I had a really nice. It was running parallel with the blade really nicely. That's amazing. Oh yeah, look, I've got it right up to the edge here, which is in fact what I want. Oh, that's perfect. It was beautiful curve. And then I've got a sharp edge, well, a dull edged sword that can be sharpened later. Um, oh, this is nice. No, it's, it's too, it's too far out at the bottom though. What can we do about that? What does this look like? Um, maybe just a touch of tapering. Don't know. Give it a touch of taper. I don't know. Yeah, because it's it's ruining my top bit. This is the one I like. All right. Um, what about some jiggery pokery with 
a move tool just to get those final place, placements of the um, top and the bottom being slightly needing adjustment. Now what happens if I play hey? No no no. What are you trying to do? No, that's not doing anything good. Um, and this thing, well, the trouble is, let's have a look at the reference. Yeah, see, it has to come out, it has to be wider at the bottom. I think my uh, boolean could should be shorter. That might and then oh god! See that angle is really good. God damn. I've made the whole thing even flatter. Flatter. Can I get that nice angle back? That's not far off. Um, down here if I pulled that yeah the thing is it does have to Yeah, this is exactly what's happening. You get this weird um, line in here, this gap, and then you have the shaft again. But the whole thing is done by about here. Um, it's complicated. this here okay um it's getting a bit silly Uh, 
I'm not far off. And I'm wondering. Hmm. That's the kind of thing, just a touch. Just pull it in a touch. Am I bullying? Yes. Um, let me see how the tip looks in reality. It's a little wider at the top. Kind of comes in. Oh, and it's not quite big enough. Okay. I thought I had symmetry on. Yes. Well, it's uh, maybe too close. Anyway. What's going on here? Is it the Y? Oh, God damn it. How can it have moved? Why would it have moved? I don't understand that. I had it centered. I guess the object is not perfectly symmetrical, I don't know. Anyway, pretty happy with that Boolean. I think that will really be quite a good result.